What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where we will be making an easy sourdough bread for absolute beginners. This recipe is absolutely perfect if you've never made sourdough bread before, if you have minimal equipment, because all you're going to need is a mixing bowl, a bread tin preferably, if not a Pyrex dish, and something to mix your dough together with, even your hand will do. And the reason that this bread is so great for beginners is because it requires no kneading and no particular skill when it comes to scoring your sourdough loaf. So this is a great recipe to start off with. And at the end of the video, I will show you a slightly more advanced version so that you can see how your recipe can develop as your skills improve. Now, if you do like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my videos. And let's get into the recipe. So once you have a lovely, bubbly and active starter like you see here, gather together 450 grams of strong bread flour, 50 grams of wholemeal flour, seven grams of salt, 350 mils of water, and 200 grams of your active sourdough starter. So really simply, all we're going to do is combine our ingredients in a bowl. And the only thing that you have to be aware of with this is to make sure that no salt comes into direct contact with your yeast. So give your dry ingredients a really good mix first, because if the salt comes into contact with your sourdough starter, with your yeast, it can actually kill the yeast, which means we won't get as good a rise on our bread. Go ahead and add your water and your sourdough starter and give everything a really good mix so it's all well combined. I absolutely love working with an active sourdough starter because it's so bubbly and it just smells really, really nice. There is no right or wrong way to bring your dough together, which is what I absolutely love about this recipe. It's no need, so it's enough to bring your dough together with the end of a wooden spoon. And you can see it comes together into quite a rough dough. So all we're going to do is cover it for about 15 minutes with a clean cloth and let it rest there, let it do its thing and allow the gluten to develop. When those 15 minutes are up, you can see that the gluten has developed quite a bit more. So you start to get that almost stringy like texture to your dough. And what we're going to do is cover it again and leave it for another 15 minutes. And by this stage, you can really see that that gluten is activating. You almost get these webs on the side of the bowl, even in that very, very short time where it's just allowed to rest on your countertop. That is absolutely ideal for a no knead bread. And after your third 15 minutes are up, the texture has really changed and we have quite a soft dough, but a dough that is very much come together. Give it a good mix around, make sure all of that dough is clean from the side of the bowl. And then what you're gonna do is allow that to rise for four hours under your cloth. And there we go. Four hours later, look how much that has changed. Now, if I had a clear bowl here, you'd see that the dough has actually almost doubled in size. But if your dough doesn't quite double in size in that four hours, don't be afraid to give it some extra time. So I'm just lightly greasing a non-stick bread tin. You can use, as I said, a Pyrex dish or any other shaped bread tin or cake tin even if you had one. All we want to do is get some shape onto this dough. And that is ready to go into whatever dish or tin or Pyrex dish that you have ready for it to prove in overnight. Because this dough does need to either sit in the fridge if you live in quite a warm area or on your countertop in more temperate climates for at least 12 hours. It is quite a sticky and wet dough, so it might take a little bit of working to get it out of your bowl. So just work that dough into the tin, even it out as much as you can. It will settle itself as it starts to prove and starts to rise, but it's nice to just give it that helping hand. Cover it and leave it either on your countertop or in your fridge overnight. I allowed my bread to rise on my countertop for about 14 hours and you can see just how much it has risen, just how much that texture has changed as all of that yeast has become super active. So I'm just going to preheat my oven to 210 degrees Celsius and this is in a fan oven. So while my oven is preheating, I'm just going to go ahead and give the bread a light dusting with some plain flour. And then I'm going to take this fancy scoring tool that Danny got me for my birthday this year. And I'm going to make some small slashes 
in the surface of the bread up to about a half an inch thick. Now this is a bread that is not that easy to score. So please do not worry if your scores like mine don't come out perfectly. And as you can see, this was my first time using this tool. So I definitely have plenty of practice to do myself. Because the dough has quite a high hydration level, the bread tends to almost fold back in on itself as opposed to holding the score. And if you don't have a scoring tool, go ahead and use a sharp knife. It all works the same way. And in order to create a really lovely crust on our bread, I want to add some steam to the oven. And to do this, I added a small baking tray to the bottom of my oven, and I'm just adding some boiling water. I'm going to bake that in my preheated oven for 30 to 32 minutes, or until the bread sounds hollow on the bottom when you tap it after you've taken it out of the tin. Cool your bread, preferably on a wire rack, as this allows air to circulate around it and make sure that your bread doesn't go soggy. And I know this is the hard part, but make sure that you let the bread cool completely for between two to four hours, depending on the temperature in your room, before you cut into your loaf. And for the sake of completeness, I really want to show you just how much your skills can improve with practice over time. So I've recently started to use a bread banneton and a slightly amended recipe so that my bread holds the score slightly better. Now there is always room for improvement. I am continuously learning how to use my scoring tool, but it just goes to show how you can develop from a very beginner loaf to a slightly more advanced version and how your skills can continuously improve and how sourdough is a continuous learning experience. And that is it everybody. Can you believe how quickly and easily that loaf came together? It just blows my mind every time. It looks absolutely incredible. It tastes absolutely incredible. This loaf will not last long in your house and I would urge you to give it a go. Please don't forget to tag me in your recreations on all of my social media platforms. Links are all in the description box below. And before you leave, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you back in my next video. Bye.